Bruh. Hey guys, I'm back for some more Art of War 3 and today I'm going to be making a guide on how to more efficiently upgrade your units to prepare them for combat uh, so that your units will perform higher with less upgrades. You don't really need to upgrade it that much and they'll be performing slightly more then if you're just upgrading all all the characteristics pretty equally. So number one, the best tip I have, is to upgrade the HP first. For any unit, give, uh, up getting the HP up is pretty important because HP will uh, it'll unlock other tiers of upgrades like your gun, maybe your first aid kit, maybe the ammo. It goes for even the troops as well as the vehicles, as well as the aviation. I have, I have, I'm upgrading my dragonflies at HP right now, and ships as well. Even buildings. HP is for buildings is very important. Now the HQ itself, I I would find that there's, I would say two or three tiers of upgrades that are most important. Now, number one, of course, is the HP tier. Uh, so get that to max, I, I really didn't because I don't know why I did not. Number two, I would say is the command points one. Because in late game, if you don't have much command points, you will lose. If you have like 140 command points and the enemy has 160, for example, it, that's 20 whole command points less. That's enough to get a whole squadron of Hawks or Vertex. That's, that's four or five, no, that's four Vertex, or four Hawks. So you'll be at a pretty big disadvantage. Uh, now, number three is this, the warehouse. At the very start of the game, the initial resources are very crucial to your base development. It'll tell you how many barracks you can place at the start, how many supply centers you can have, how many power plants, and whether you can build an assault vehicle factory in deployment time if you wanted to. So this will tactically increase your chances of survival by quite a bit. Now for units, after you upgrade your HP, I would say upgrade your weapon. Now for the rifleman it would be the gun. Why the weapon and not armor, for example, is because the weapon will increase your range. Range is very very important. That said, if you can shoot down things before they even reach you, then you, why, you don't need armor. So that's why you should upgrade the weapons first. That's also the reason why if you go to the heroes and look at my Leviathan, I have maximum range uh, on my side auto cannons and my main auto cannons for my class and my range. Because the range is very, very important. The range means if you you can kill buildings at range with my Leviathan, and some troops won't even be able to shoot at it. Same thing for artillery and tanks. Now I I need to put in a lot of work for my Jaguar, but I have not got the time for that. My mammoths I did upgrade pretty pretty recently. I would say like half a year ago I maxed them out. For the range, sixteen is max range. Uh, my Hawks, yeah, they got the max missiles. For your jets, there is, the missiles are the range. Uh, I think the missile system is range as well. I don't know, both of these are range. Now, Albatross, of course, there is no range. The firing range is stuck. So, after you, uh, after you max the HP, I would just say to max out the bomb. Now, of course, after you do this, what do you do next? Now you do the uh, now you do the armor. After you do the weapon and the HP, then you should go for the armor. That'll just make it durable. HP will increase the survivability. The weapons will increase the range and damage by a little bit, and then the armor will just increase the overall survivability of your unit, and will be pretty well. Now for your administrative buildings, no matter what rank you are. These two characteristics should always be maxed. Uh, your automated re resource warehouse, which will just increase the resource production raw, 
and then the resource planning service which will compensate the next SDS decrease by 2% which means the next supply center you build will be slightly more efficient. Those two should always be maxed. You don't want to be in a scenario where your enemy just makes more resources than you than you have. That, that'll put you at a big disadvantage. Same for the power plant. These two should be maxed at all times. The more power you have, the less power plants you gotta build. So the, the more real estate you'll have when building other buildings, uh, and it's just more useful. For construction yard, this should be maxed. I haven't because I'm a noob. <laughs> But I believe at the 12th upgrade is when this becomes max range. The max range of the construction yard is 11 cells of radius, which is pretty big, although I wish they made it 12. Now you, you almost should never upgrade your super weapons until you hit gold or star league. At those two leagues, end game is very interesting uh, in the fact that many people camp it out. And when camping, you have to go for a super weapon. If your enemy camps, you have to go for a super weapon. Unless you can deal with it somehow, which is almost never the case. For defense buildings, honestly, they're not that important. Upgrades aren't really that important. You might want to upgrade your naval platform because navy is a pain to deal with. But other than that, really, the defense buildings aren't that important. Factories, this is very important. HP and armor isn't really that important yet. Until you hit Star League, that's when you should upgrade your HP and armor. I know my armor is pretty weak, but hey, don't look at my armor. Do not look at that armor. Back to units. What do you do after you upgrade the HP, the gun, and the armor? Then you just upgrade the miscellaneous stuff like repair, maybe the, the helmet for infantry units, uh, maybe the ammo itself. Ammo is pretty good, although weapon upgrades are much better. Ammo reload time by minus 0.1 seconds may not seem like much, but that's quite a bit. You'll be able to get more, more salvos in. And yeah, it's pretty good. Now, if you're playing as the resistance and you want to upgrade your armadillo, I would say up once you finish maxing the uh, HP, armor, gun, and the and the shells itself, I would say max the mine layer. And if you maxed all of those, and you want to know what kind of mine to max, I would start off actually by maxing out the universal mine because it's the cheapest to upgrade, and in low ranks especially, it's pretty versatile to use. After you upgrade that, skip this. Go for the lizard tank mines, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, lizard mines, which are anti-tank. I know they're expensive at 30 resources, but look at the damage. 6.4 thousand damage against armor 2. Put, to put that into perspective, 6.4 thousand damage. Oh, wait, no, wrong thing. Go here. That is... I would say 70% the damage of this tactical nuclear missile of a class 5 leviathan. I believe it is the raw damage for a stock leviathan. But yeah, max, max out the anti-tank uh, infantry mine, it's really really strong. It's almost like a nuclear missile, but it's a mine. So if you can tactically place those mine lanes, nah, I don't know what I just said. If you can tactically place those minefields, it'll deal some really good damage. Especially at Silver League. Silver League is when you should be laying lots of mines, artillery units should be relatively maxed, and porcupine should always be maxed because it's pretty useful. I don't have it maxed. I, I really don't have anything maxed. My, 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 my mammoths aren't maxed. Chameleon, this should always be maxed because the radius is important. This can be maxed. Energy isn't really that important if you have two or three. But hey, it's a useful upgrade. Now, I, I guess that sums up everything, right? 
You can upgrade the heroes based on you know, your own playstyle. I upgrade the HP, the armor, and the repair module because I use HP to tank damage and to repair my own allied troops. But if you want to, if you want the mole to do surprise attacks with the drill, then yeah, you could upgrade that as well. And maybe you want to go up and down quickly so you can, you know, match your moving army. Then you could upgrade that. For Wasp, I have this as a versatile unit. I basically upgraded all the core components, excluding the scanners and the quick fix kit. Now the Leviathan, I upgraded mines as a ground assault uh, unit. That's why I have the 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 HP and the armor maxed, and the two guns maxed. So the main guns and then the side guns. My anti-air isn't really that maxed because. Uh, it's, I don't really need it because usually when I go for Leviathan I have Hawks and Hawks will just perform as my anti-air yeah I don't have the Operation Matrix maxed out which would be useful then again I do use Leviathan as a ground assault unit Operation Matrix would be really useful against Cyclones where they're fast and moving, and my Leviathan will miss the uh, Cyclones pretty quickly. And then there's obviously the Repair Kit. So, that's pretty much the upgrades for Resistance. And what else is there? Kaiman Mines are really strong, you can upgrade that if you want. Barracudas are good. Honestly, for the Barracudas, I would max their Missiles first. And then I would max their torpedo. Since you don't really use barracudas against ships, you mainly use it for the long range. So max the miss missiles out before you do the torpedoes. And for alligators, of course, max the core components. Max the uh, anti-air after you max the core components. Since you use alligators to destroy other ships first. Anyway, that, that should be pretty... I should cover, I think I covered everything. So yeah, I, I guess that's it. That's a pretty good overview of the workshop. Plan the upgrades carefully. And max range first, range is better. Range is better than armor in almost all scenarios. So yeah, max range first, range is epic. And yeah, that's about it.